And hello, you're welcome to the City Newsroom. My name is Vivian Kai Lopo. And my name is Umar Sanda Amadou. Coming up. Displaced residents of torrential rains in parts of the West Mampusi municipality yet to receive support despite a donation of 100,000 Ghana cities and relief items to the assembly by the government. I heard he came, he brought some news, like some amount. The amount he brought, it have not given to us. They took the money to Walwale without telling us anything. Residents of cocoa growing communities in the Alembele district of the western region urge government to fix the deplorable 75 kilometer Nyami Betre to Pristia and Quanta Road. <laughs> Also coming up on Constituency Radar, we'll take you to the Gomwa East Constituency where the NDC and the MPP candidates battle it out again for the 2020 parliamentary elections. Dave, he cannot boast of anything. But as many is just planting his money around. I will even advise him to stop campaigning. There's no classroom in Gomwa East uh, constituency that we say have not been able, uh, have not received um, a number of chairs from the MP or the Assembly. And later, after missing several completion deadlines, the Lada de Kotobo Municipal Assembly assures the refurbished lab market will be completed by the end of October and opened to traders. With lab market, we are about 97 to 98% done, and we're hoping to commission it this month. Let's bring you details of our stories. And nearly 24 hours after the government donated some funds and relief items to flood victims of Thursday's torrential rains in the West Mampusi municipality, the victims are yet to receive the items. When City News visited the victims who are housed in a school in the Diani community, they complained about hunger as food from the assembly is not forthcoming. The 100,000 Ghana cities was presented to victims by the Vice President, Dr. Mahamud Baumia, together with some relief items at a short ceremony on Friday. The money was handed over to the Chief Executive of the West Mampusi Municipality publicly. But checks by City News at the Diani Basic School, where the affected residents are staying temporarily, show that they are getting more frustrated. With over 300 people in two classrooms, overcrowding is inevitable amidst the threat of a contagious disease like COVID-19. Uh, we are finding it difficult to uh, have access to the, uh, this, the accommodation is, pro is problem, feeding is problem, and many other things. The accommodation challenge is that we are only having access to only two classrooms in the building. And where two communities are displaced. The other community where a guy been in Dumia. So since we all come to this place and it's only two classrooms, we divided the uh, people in one room and then think uh, a guy been to in other room. So the so the females are sleeping inside while the males are hanging at the verandas. Assembly member for the three affected communities explains why. Through the MC this uh, this chief executive he, he called me and then said we should give them the two classrooms and they stay for the meantime. That he will come later and then open the rest of the accommodation for them. And up to now, nothing has happened. Actually, the kids are not with us and they are not with the district chief executive. You know, the building uh, is not yet uh, handed over. So because of that, the contractor is still having the keys. The Thursday dawn torrential rain led to the collapse of a dam and flooded the communities. Close to 1,000 residents have been affected so far, according to the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO. 
Most households have lost their entire property, including food items, leading to starvation. They say they are giving us food, but the food. I say we, the old people, we don't eat. We always, if it is small, unless we give it to the small children. Hmm. What do you want the government to do to solve you? Because they said they are brought you here as temporary measures and all that, but, you know, is it's it enough? Mm. It's not enough, but now, hmm, how Ghana is moving there, we can't tell. Now we have nothing. We have no farm again. The water has washed all the farm crops away. What are we going to use for the houses? I heard he came, he brought some maize, plus some amount. The amount he brought, it has not given to us. The DC. They took the money to Walwale without telling us anything. The floods carried away items such as cooking utensils, cash and firewood, making life difficult for the victims. Salama to Mohammed is one of them. The mosquito yesterday, we couldn't sleep. It was hard for us to sleep, so we just managed. We don't know how to do it again. Why they didn't give you mosquito nets and repellent? The mosquito nets, if... It's, if we can't sleep on it like that, unless we wash it. Mosquito coil to, it's, yes, they, they, either they will use it or there's no mosquito coil for us again. The yes. food station is very bad. Since yesterday, to this time, we didn't eat. There's no food for us. This morning, I used my one seed and go and buy food for the children. There's no money. <laughs> we are, the way, <laughs> we, we can't even talk. Unless there is, if government support us or if anybody who is ready or willing to support us, we are begging. Has, have you received the money? Have you received the food items? The food items is with us, but the money, we don't know where it is now. Well, residents of cocoa growing communities in the Elembele district of the western region who apply the Nyami Betre to Pristia Nkwanta Road want government to immediately fix the 75-kilometer deplorable road. Stranded motorists whose vehicles and motorbikes had stuck on the, were stuck rather, on the muddy road have been speaking to City News in the following report. The northern part of the Lembele district of the western region is known for the cultivation of cocoa, but just like other areas, the road network is not in the best of shape. The 75-kilometer Nyameba Trail to Pristia in Kwanta Road is among the many deplorable roads in the area. Stranded travelers who spoke to City News on the road say, successive governments only grade the road whenever election is approaching, only for the situation to worsen when it rains. Well, actually, I'm a midwife. I'm newly posted to Asma Chiefs. So it has been, I say, two weeks since I came here. And then I'm going back to Takrali. And this is what I'm facing right now. When I'm coming, I came with uh, 4x4. So I didn't experience what I'm experiencing now. So it is a big challenge. We are pleading on the government to come to the aid of the people around this area. So that the road will be fixed. <laughs> And so, Yena, I say, and Kagana for him, and Tibet Strabine, so on train, you say, no one say, Nipa, and yes, sir, baby, a corner, yes, we have a dream, maybe, no, you bet me, Pania, yes, we bet me, Abuama, a bind so, the baby pied, a free half, and Tibet Sre, said by one year more, this a bind of the cocoa womb, Nasa, or Shane, and him, and him, so cocoa, and Faso, or Eddie Buagana, dear, and you'll try me and make shay, cocoa. from my heart to I be potting ten or so. It's your three hours before you go 
the incumbent member of parliament for Lembele, whose campaign vehicle was stuck on a wooden bridge on the road, tells City News the road was awarded on contract but was suspended by the incumbent government. Cocoa Board has accepted that this is a cocoa growing area. And so this area qualifies as a, a cocoa um, road area. And so we have Cocoa Board's commitment. The problem is that you saw the decision that was made to suspend all cocoa roads. It affected all the roads networks. I mean, just in the last six months, the contractor was asked to do additional seven kilometers of it. It doesn't really make any, it doesn't help. So the plan is to really get Cocoa Board at the right time, and obviously, to basically accept that the key to getting more Cocoa for Ghana is to basically construct the road from uh, centers all the way to Christia Junction, Quanta. And then do that one to move in the junction to Rasumas, transform this area so we can get the cocoa out and in the process basically help the struggling farmers in this area. Let's move on to some other stories and some cocoa farmers have started cashing in on the new cocoa produce price of 600 and 60 Ghana cities per bag. That was announced by President Kufuado last week. Now, the increment took effect from the 1st of October 2020 as scheduled. The new cocoa producer price of 10,560 Ghana cities per metric ton for the 2020-2021 crop year is equivalent to 660 Ghana cities per bag. This represents a hike of more than 28% over the price obtained in the outgoing crop year of 2019-2020. Purchasing clerks, otherwise referred to as PCs, in the Sehuyoso municipality of the Western North region have started using the new cocoa price for buying cocoa from farmers. Most of the PCs did not speak to City News on during a visit to communities such as Old Adiemra, Sefi Anriem, and Kesikrum. The district officer for Unicorn Coco Limited, Damte John, however, spoke to City News. I'm saying last week, Thursday, now, I'm not down to the BCI or Serious Grayson's Park. In the alone, there are no the price in the two. In fact, or the two, the farmers were exciting. Or money, Jipa. Yeah, so you took a right from the onset and then started to say they were going to be a juma. In the week, you know, we could be a good thing with a new price, which is 10,560 per metric ton. In the week, you know, it's a bag of BI 660 Ghana CD. I said, see, I didn't make a form. The Akua form is when you have so you part, but for from now, you have a juma. Coco, no, dear, I have seen on a farm, it's no expect it, say, but two. No more Christ, but 625. Sana and now more kicker. If the government can't 660, no, now surprise will be a. Right from that day, now no more status, a cuckoo be a hold to be a about. To that day, no crime, a crime to cuckoo over 50 bucks. That very day, now. Some of the farmers who had had their fair share of the new price, including others who kept their produce in anticipation of the new price, also spoke to City News. I feel ya, I buy you cocoa. Cocoa in there, ya dana sepa. But ya titi, ya 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 sasa ya cocoa. I feel I'm de 36 kilos. I di aba di woha. If I show cocoa na ya two mono, I'm a ya niya je kama se si a kura mpo kakra miya miya 36 kilos. I'm going to carry 3.8. I'm going to kura na mi jina huya me be kariaji misika kura. I'm a ya niya je. I'm a mahuadeng. 
Some in fine Juman. The choir buying Namso, I took a cool me, I'm Jimmy, and then you so. Eman Juman Gusu are made, me ye, said they are mentioning ye the day. I come on, ye da or man penny, I say, Nana Dobuni, I say. So as the DOs and the PCs have started purchasing the cocoa with the new price announced by the government about a week ago, farmers are also expectant to get huge money this year as they, they didn't even expect what the, the price that the government gave them. For City News, I'm Stanley Bwedi, Kesikrum. Now, employees of foreign traders whose shops were closed down during an exercise by the Committee on Foreigners in Retail Trade are appealing to government to consider reopening the shops since they are now jobless. The affected workers say they are faced with serious difficulties as the shops remain closed to business. The workers made known their concerns at a news conference in Kumasi from where City News' Hafiz Tijani reports. The Committee on Foreigners in Retail Trade in August this year, visited the Swami Magazine Industrial Area, Bantama, Achenfo, and Alaba markets to enforce Ghana's law barring foreigners from engaging in retail trade. Some shops were closed down after their owners failed to furnish the committee with the necessary documents that permit them to engage in retail trade in Ghana. While government is taking steps to resolve the disagreement, Ghanaians who work for these foreigners say they are bearing the brunt of the shop closure. We are facing many difficulties. After, all, after the lockdown, our, um, our bosses, like our managers and our bosses help us. Let me say, when, when the lockdown came, they, they give us money, they gave us money to cater for our family and others. And they support us. So we are suffering, we are suffering, indeed, we are suffering. At a news conference in Kumase, the affected workers appealed to the government to expedite processes towards reopening of the shops. The problem is that I have a store because I want to have a fear. The bedini baby a beda, a yes can find share with ya yet if ye it's a sana or maybe a stone in my bebre and I bed I so if you say almost two money yet if ye ye need me be I get and cafes na nanka stone or honor no moon to mono a day ye bed ye sicker now watch ye bed you know so me yaji and so the same in the yet if ye a day na emba was so many now and by tea and only how I dare to now de name so on why no one kept my and not assumed ye and bra shop in one month, one week in the Etifi, in Yeduma. And once I do my ass near Yam for some Yetuaka. See Etifi, fashion agent, a scavenger, the cottagean. Tears up for a do. Oma Fay and Nimka Cra, Oma be shop on mine. The committee closed down over 100 shops during the exercise in the Ashanti region alone. Aside, many others closed down in Accra for city news. Hafiz Tijani reporting. Let's move on to some other stories and the promise by the opposition National Democratic Congress flag bearer to build more trees in Zongo communities if it wins the 2020 presidential election continues to divide opinions sharply among Muslim leaders and their followers in the country. Now, in the last uh, latest episode, the leadership of the Council of Imams in the Ashanti region have backed the Ashanti regional chief imam's rejection of the proposal. They have kicked against calls for the resignation of the chief imam over his comments on the matter. Following the promise made by the Opposition National Democratic Congress to construct mugs in Zongo communities, the Ashanti Regional Chief Imam, Sheikh Abdul Haruna, at an event recently downplayed the proposal. He rather called on political parties to facilitate the inclusion of Zongos in relevant developmental projects. But his comments did not go down well with some Muslims, particularly among the youth who called for his resignation. Speaking at a press conference in Kumasi, the ulema asked the Muslim youth to comport themselves 
Abdul Mumin Jallu spoke on behalf of the council. The regional chief imam was accused of being biased in his speeches recently in favor for the ruling party. It is unfortunate that the youth have seen our imam's attempt to attract development to the community as talking for the ruling party. Imam will do anything to attract development for Muslim Ummah, but that does not mean he is biased against any political party or group of people. The executive secretary for the Ashanti regional chief imam, Ustaz Ahmed Saidu, justified the imam's comment. He says the imam, as a leader of the Muslim community, was only pushing for better development for Zongus. The imam is a leader, and a leader needs the quality of his own people. He, he is to direct his own people to the betterment of their own lives. This is why the imam has come out to say what he has said, not in favor of a particular political party or bias against any particular party. But if he's saying that we, need, we do not need a mock, we rather need what? Some capacity building. I mean, he's right. He's not criticizing the, the idea of the mock. Rather, he's telling an al uh, alternative policy that the president, uh, the, uh, uh, a former vice president should initiate instead of talking about mocks. I mean, we, do, we, we need life. He says instead of a promise to construct mortuaries, steps must be taken to facilitate the early release of corpses to allow for quick burial in accordance with Islamic teachings. We would have liked the president to say that he will initiate the issue of releasing our dead bodies as quickly as possible. Because this is what we need. Kolebu, for instance, you know, delay the release of our dead bodies for about two, three weeks. This has been done, even here at Konfonochi. So we would have liked him to say, when he comes to power, he would uh, uh, allow them to hurriedly give us our dead bodies to, build, uh, to bury them as quickly as possible. This is what we want. Now, the flag bearer of the opposition NDC does the National Democratic Congress, John Dramani Mahama, says the next NDC government will institute a gold board to be in charge of all small-scale mining activities in the country. He says the board will, among other things, ensure responsible mining. Addressing the chiefs and people of Kokun Trisu in the Bono East region, John Mahama said this gold board will employ graduates of the University of Mines and Technology in carrying out its mandate. The Akufado administration in 2017 instituted measures to stop all forms of illegal small-scale mining in the country. According to the government, many water bodies and other natural resources were depleting due to the illegal mining activities. Operation Vanguard, a military police joint force, was thus formed by the president to clamp down on the activities of illegal miners. In line with this, Many excavators and mining equipment were seized while others were destroyed, with many perpetrators arrested, although a handful were prosecuted. Despite initial gains made from the exercise with the restoration of some water bodies, the fight was largely unsuccessful as the illegality continues in many parts of the country. John Dramani Mahama believes the institution of a gold board will lead to an effective monitoring of small-scale miners. The NDC flag bearer said this during an interaction with the chiefs and people of Konkon Triso in the Bruno East region. So a concession. Now we need to carry the metal gold, you know. So I go body. I'm betting me a bomb boss here. So we have excavator. I'm betting me a boy. No one rent here excavator. Now I'm be far. I'm rent here. I'm work for school. I'm work for school. I'm work for mining. Oh, into the bia. I'm be a small scale mining bia. So I'm quite the year. I'm work here University of Mines and Technology. Ah, I'm only mining. Who name day? Now, 
kakra obe nye biya na odi biya to hon wu yuya onbe chao se na obe kata asa se no so na ode anyuya na e kata so no na ode ego so na se yendiya ni ebe duya na yedu eduya yendiya ego asa se no so na usika kakra ya jeto hono ni ede wade ama hon na ode ko the opposition national democratic congress has in recent times accused the government of nepotism in the issuance of permits to minors John Dramani Mahama says such situations will not exist under his administration. For City News, Kweku Ediyama Ansa. When we come back. On the constituency radar, we'll take you to the Gomwa East constituency and see how the two major political parties are going to battle it out for the parliamentary seat. We have that story and more, don't worry. Rigworld Solutions, forging the frameworks of Ghanaian industry. Engineering solutions from the heart of Takrade Kejebil. At Rigworld Solutions, we manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings for the extractive and petrochemical industries. World-class products with local expertise. Locate our factory in Kejebil, of the Takrade Takwa Road. Call 0302-949917 or 0540-107504. Email enquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. Today with just 20 Ghana cities, you could win a Mercedes and a 100,000 Ghana city worth of prizes. This advert has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly, not for persons below the age of 8. Dance the night away with some real funky shows this September on GoTV. And get hip and fabulous with some Niger food to whet your African appetite. Oh, uh, why don't we eat? It's all mind over matter when you upgrade to GoTV Plus or GoTV Max. It takes a brilliant mind to take down an insane street smart criminal. Stay connected or upgrade to GoTV Plus or GoTV Max for access to real groovy shows. We're putting the funk in entertainment. GoTV. Live it. Love it. Yeah, welcome back to the City Newsroom. Now the battle line is drawn in the Goma East constituency as the NDC's Desmond de Graft Peito, who lost to the incumbent MP Kojo Ismeni in the 2016 parliamentary election, is seeking a rematch in the 2020 elections. Now Central Regional Correspondent Calvin Stetter visited the constituency and reports. The Gumwa East District, with its capital at Potting, was carved out of the then Gumwa District in 2008 by Legislative Instrument 1883 and became operational in February 2008. Subsequently, Gumwa Central was also created out of Gumwa East District to ensure that development is brought to the doorstep of the people. The population of the district, according to the 2010 census, stood at 250,000. The locals in the constituency 
often engaged in fishing and farming activities. For a living, despite its proximity to the capital, Accra, not much development has taken place. The new Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress are the two main dominant parties in the constituency. In the 2000 general elections, the new Patriotic Party's Emmanuel Echampon ended the National Democratic Congress dominance in the constituency by winning the seat. The unfortunate demise of the incumbent MP Emmanuel Echampon through a motor accident set the stage for a by-election in 2003. In the by-election, Richmond Samquam of the new Patriotic Party polled 11,380, representing 67%. Whilst the NDC's Richard Annan, who had contested teacher a champion earlier, got 5,356, representing 31%. The MPP maintained its incumbent MP Sam Kwam for the 2004 elections, and he beat off competition from Theophilos Kofi Ampa of the NDC. In 2008, Sam Kwam lost to the NDC's Ekao Penyi Ochiri Edumwa, and he maintained the seat for two terms. In the 2016 parliamentary elections, the then incumbent MP, Eko Penyi Edumwa, stepped down, allowing Desmond de Grafpetu to represent the party. The MPP's Kojo Asimenyi, at the end of the elections, polled 17,654, representing 50%, whilst Desmond de Grafpetu got over 15,000 votes, representing a little over 42%. Uh, Desmond de Grafpetu is coming up for the second time against incumbent MP Kojo Asimenyi. Here are supporters of the two parties. Kojo Asimenyi cannot boast of anything. Nothing, nothing, nothing. In Gomwa East, we just saw this in their manifesto, the said manifesto that MPP did. Gomwa East, what, what did they present you with? Toilets? someone's toilet and how do you call it uh, is it polytanks that's what we saw in their manifesto they, he cannot boast of anything but yes many is just flaunting his money around i will even advise him to stop campaigning our opponents know that if you go to Potton, the road from Potton junction to the district capital Potton, is terribly bad if you come to dominance junction the road from the junction to dominance is also terribly bad and the people are crying for the roads to be fixed. So I believe if you add the issue of education and our bad roads, we have the conviction that Desmond the, the, the Petu is the only messiah who will come help us solve these problems. We came under two years and we were able to penetrate, we were able to do what is necessary by having our own district. And that alone is to bring development close to the people. We can talk of um, the new assembly and what we have achieved so far. It is, it is, it is incredible. You can talk of uh, road, road shaping, water projects. There's no classroom in Gumwa East uh, constituency that we say have not been able, uh, have not received a number of chairs from the MP or the assembly. Uh, um, support he gives to women, especially when they complete the apprenticeship. Um, he tries as much as possible to support them with machines, sewing machines, um, dryers, those who complete, um, who learn how to, um, what do we call it, uh, hairdressers and all that. He tries as much as possible to support them with a the little he can, so they can start their own businesses. In fact, I would say my MP is the only MP in this country who supported the Fisher Foods when there is uh, the breakdown. And those with the ministerial police, none of them have even had this idea of doing such a thing. But he was able to do this to Dampase, Nyanya, no, to Fete Kakaba. For local fishermen in the constituency, their vote will go to the party who has policies that will help improve their work. The telephone will say, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Mojumaizi. 
Non, 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 Mwaji wa bonya ni sabu de kwata di ben de mi ni yakono wa ya men bele 70 million ye pe na chede yun de wa bonya o kwa bidu constituency chairman for the ndc in gomwa east anthony efisa believes the ndc has 70% chance of snatching the seat from the mpp on december 7 he accused the incumbent mp kojo asimenyi of not doing enough to better the lives of the people in his constituency we know our opponent, which is uh, Kojo Asmani, is rather working for us. Simple because he has done nothing for the constituency. So even the work we have to do, uh, yeah, people know because it did nothing. They are ready to vote for us. So we are coming on power 2020 on the 7th of December. Now, when we are in power, we did from Kaswatunya and all the goddess, it left with only two put maybe stones on it and we left on power. Right now, we had only two months to the election. Now we have seen he has put some machines on Yanyan Road and even we don't know what he's doing. Head of Research and Elections for the New Patriotic Party in Gomwa East, Richard Cosmos Abaka, is starting the achievements of the MPP as a key win to the elections. After we've gotten this district, mm, just two years, when Baumia was launching his what, development tracker, hmm, the whole central region, Gomwa East district was used as the model on behalf of what central region. A new district which was created just two years, hmm, 38 ongoing projects. When you go into details, the MP's greatest achievement within this short time is the creation of the district. Let's talk about the use of the common fund. Now, when this MP came, he, he has set up what we call a uh, tertiary support fund. All students who want to enter into tertiary institutions, there's some allocation of what fund at the district that when you go, the minimum that you will get is 1,000 Ghana cities. It's there. We have sponsored 250 students hmm, at our various what, universities. We also have what we call a uh, driver's license support fund. 650 individuals from the Gumwa East uh, constituency have benefited from, what, uh, from driver's licenses. From the Gumwa East district, I am Calvis Tete for City News. Now, two years since the first deadline for the renovation of the La Market was missed, traders there can now heave a sigh of relief as they will move into a refurbished market before the end of this year. This is according to the Ladadekotupo Municipal Assembly, which says the project will be completed by the end of October. Akosia of Opoku has more in this report. The contract for the construction of the La Market was awarded in September 2016 and was expected to be completed in April 2018. But four years since the construction works began, traders are still selling at the temporary market an environment they have described as unfavorable. years. <laughs> One year, no, I've been now. Now, I've been four years now. Eh, was she caffeine about time being because the street, you know, a whole jalai street, you know, was caffeine about time, a piety, she now. Now, now, I can't jala, eh, I'm a, eh, I'm a guess September ending, I can't buy a September ending, eh, where October me, what libby, I'm a bad care, what I can't where I don't. The traders, who are eager for the completion and commissioning of the new market complex, however insist 
that the initial agreement for the distribution of the stalls be maintained. <laughs> The municipal chief executive for Ladma, Solomon Kote Nikwe, has given assurances that the La Market will soon be ready for use as the project is over 90% complete. With La Market, we are about 97 to 98% done, and we're hoping to commission it this month. I mean, just as you said, I mean, uh, I'm so much committed and passionate about that project. I go there almost every morning. Weekends, I'm there with the contractors and then the workers, just making sure that we complete the project so that we move our uh, women into the markets. I mean, one of the things that enhance the economy of a municipality is, is, is business, markets. So if we want to enhance the economy of the municipality, I mean, we should be able to open the markets, move our market women in. We have other shops that will be given out to other people who will be willing to do business there. So I believe opening the market will open the municipality uh, when it comes to uh, financial, financial wise. Funding for the project is being drawn from internally generated funds and the municipality's allocation of the District Assembly Common Fund. When completed, the new La Market complex will have 50 lockable shops, 214 stalls, a car park, a slaughterhouse, and a 23-seater washroom facility, amongst others. We still stay with La because the preservation and safety of remains of loved ones at the La Public Cemetery in Accra will no longer be a source of worry to the bereaved families following the construction of a fence wall around the space. Now, the MCE for the area gave this assurance when he commissioned the refurbished cemetery on Friday. The construction works for the fence wall which spans a distance of 1,568 meters, was executed by Olivet Company Limited, a Ghanaian firm, and cost the municipal assembly a sum of 407,000 Ghana cities. Initially started in 2018, the project stalled, owing to a number of issues, including a tussle over the ownership of a portion of the land where the cemetery is located. Speaking to City News after the ceremony, the MCE, Solomon Kote Nikoi explained that the project was necessary to help redeem the image of the facility. Our cemetery in the past was not defeating the status of the municipality. It was in a serious, deplorable state. So we as an assembly, we took it upon ourselves to, I mean, renovate it, fence it, and then bring it to a level where it will befit the standard of the assembly. Today, when you go to La uh, cemetery. I mean, it looks nice and better than any public cemetery in Greater Accra. And what we're planning doing now is we want to, I mean, use a portion in the cemetery uh, like VIP uh, barrier area, something like we have at uh, Gesimene. So it's something that we want to do. So people who want to do I mean, private barrier, and they would like to go to Gesimene. We are inviting them that very soon they can come to La Dedekutupon municipality. They have a nice place to bury their loved ones so that the money will come into the assembly's coffers. The head of works for Ladma, 
Richard Ben Debra, also listed the other projects that were undertaken at the cemetery, which he explained would improve security at the facility. We also uh, did pavement works, pavement works to ensure that whenever it rains, people can still get access and people can move around without any inconvenience. We also had a, a security post in addition. That one will be used by the system in the, in the cemetery. Within the cemetery, you have five entrances. One is for the Muslim community. You have the main one and then the exit. And then there's another one at the northern side where if you want to bring any debris or any uh, heavy load, that is where the big trucks will be passing. The ceremony also saw the handing over of three vehicles to some departments of the assembly for official work purposes. You're watching City News Ramon, City TV still ahead. GFA President Keto Kreku lords Ghanaian media for the support given his administration thus far. Stay with us, we'll be right back. beans, not they? How many are you in this house? You make that much waste here? Oh no, we try and segregate our waste as much as possible. We don't mix all the waste together. Oh you people, every bola is bola. Why separate them? <laughs> I'm a pa. Segregation helps the environment a lot, you know. Not all waste must go to the landfill cycle. For us, we use the food waste as manual for the garden. And the plastic waste, we keep them for recyclers to pick them. Recycle? Aye. They recycle it into other useful products. So that reduces the waste in the environment. And you know every bola is bola on my sister. I see. How smart. Segregate your waste today. Segregate in school segregate at church. In fact, segregate everywhere. Be smart. Don't mix it all up. Hello, my brother. It's been a long while. Your house they be oh. I use the finest materials for this building. I can see that. But my brother, you know we just last year you built this house? Oh, yeah. When the wall started to peel off like banana due to rising damp, my brother, that's been my issue. I've tried so many things, but nothing works. You know what? They even use that black rubber thing only before the concrete casting. You mean that bola rubber? Oh, my brother, you would have saved yourself the stress if only you used the Squid DPM from Vertigo Limited. Really? That'd be what my puppy used for her. And over so many years, the house still they come up. For purchases and inquiries, contact Vertigo Limited at Spinters Road, Accra, or in Kumasi at Ushumasi Kwaraswa. The Squid DPM, no size. We have new addictive series for you on DSTV. A country invaded. Another surrender. What will America do? So much has changed. No, you've changed. Go, go, go! Love a good British drama. World on Fire's intimate portrayal of the effects of wartime on ordinary people may be your next favorite thing to watch. Or catch Stargirl, a stellar series around a teenage superhero who is a shining beacon in the darkest of times. True crime fans, you'll be fascinated by this brilliant federal agent as she dives into the dark criminal underworld. And join some of Power's most controversial characters in this spin-off. Series definitely worth checking out on DSTV. Hey, welcome back to the City Newsroom. Now, President of the Ghana Football Association, Kurt Okreku, has lauded the efforts of the media in promoting the growth of the sport in the country during his time at the helm of affairs at the GFA. 
Now, the GFA president made these remarks as part of a working visit to the offices of CTFM and CTTV on Thursday. Here's a report. The Ghana Football Association president, Ket Okreku, along with some executives of the country's football governing body, paid a Ketsi call on the top hierarchy of CTFM and CTTV on Thursday. The visit was part of the GFA's efforts to galvanize media support ahead of the start of the new football season next month. Ket Okreku, in his address, highlighted the importance of media in the running of football in the country and asked for continued support from the station in the future. And we appreciate um, the support, like I said, that you've offered Ghana football. It is that time of our tenure that we even need you more. Um, because this sport cannot be what it's supposed to be if we don't work closely with our media partners. And me being a, a son of the media fraternity, obviously I know the power of the media, for which reason I don't want to leave any stone on ten whatsoever to ensure that we have a very, very close and good working relationship with the media. Managing Director of CTFM and CTTV, Samuel Atamensa, reiterated the station's commitment to supporting the growth of the sport in the country. It's about Ghana and we, we will gladly accept the invitation to be part of um, the efforts to rebuild the image and also um, the brand of Ghana football um, in total. So our doors are open. Um, our um, colleagues here, Fentio heads uh, the sports desk now. Um, they're not supervisors, but you know, uh, we are all involved and we, we also commit our total support to the, to the new FA in all your efforts, not some of them, all your efforts. Um, the ones that we can do for free, we will do for free. Um, it's a call to national duty, no two ways about that. Uh, Deputy Minister of Education, Dr. Osei Yaweduchum, wants trainee teachers from the country's colleges of education to take keen interest in shaping the future of the students they teach. He says the focus for teachers must not only be on the weakness of the students, but rather on values that will shape them better for the future. City News' Hafiz Tijani reports. Dr. Yao Educhum is concerned about how some teachers easily give up in their effort to shape the future of their students. Although he believes it takes a lot of courage to instill discipline and hope in the upbringing of students, he wants teachers to remain committed in performing such a tax. He made the remarks during a virtual graduation ceremony at the eighth graduation of Jackson College of Education in the Ashanti region. Your praises may come when you least expect it. They may meet you one day at KJT or somewhere in Accra and say, you are the teacher who gave me hope. So don't give up on, on your children ever. Let them know and please understand that you are going to be the one that will give them hope. But when you give them hope, and they buy into the hope, and the hopelessness disappear, then the challenges in the classroom also diminishes. The deputy minister entreated teacher trainees to uphold the ethics of the teaching profession. The principal of the college, Theodosia Wilhelmina Jackson, said the institution will continue to encourage its graduates to accept postings to rural areas to be able to reach out to the less privileged. JCE was established to bring hope for a brighter future, especially to the marginalized and the less privileged in society. We vehemently believe as an institution that peoples in less privileged areas also deserve quality education as they appear in towns and in cities. We therefore encourage our graduates to take up teaching positions in these areas to push this agenda. I'm happy to say that management followed up on a visit to the Upper East, Upper West, and they are at post 
they were not posted and they had to run away. Well, that's it for today's edition of the City Newsroom. Log on to our website, citynewsroom.com. We have more stories there. You can also subscribe to CityTube on YouTube, where we have more exclusive video content for you. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store or the App Store and keep updated on the go. City TV is live on DSTV channel 363 and GoTV channel 182. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And my name is Sumaru Sanda Amado. Thank you for watching.